Hi, my name is Eduardo Fleury. I'm from Brazil. I'd like to thank the opportunity to be here, special for Daniele Valoras in this fight against the breast implants. And I'm going to share my experience with this issue. It's important to say that I have no, no competing interest, interest here in the presentation. And a little about my, myself, I'm a PhD, a medical doctor, professor, and uh, I have the diploma in breast imaging, and I work in this oncology center in Brazil. And when it, we care for people and their histories, and this is what we, uh, our mission in, the, in, in our hospital. We made a lot of research in our center, and one of the researches is the regarding breast implants. And here's what, what we are doing now at our center. Um, the presentation, uh, I think, breast implant illness can can be talk about the sound of silence because it's so difficult for people to hear what the women are saying about their implants. I started studying the breast implants in the beginning of 2015, when I had a patient that I, I gave a report at the MRI, like there is nothing in the, in the exam, only a capsule contracture. But at that time, I'm, I was not used to, to give that diagnosis of contracture. So it, it, my, at my report, I only say that there is no signs of intracapsular rupture. And this patient has several complaints or clinical complaints. And when she explained, she called me and she gave me her, her, her implants. And she told me that she had the, the problem on, on the implant and then I didn't saw it on the MRI. So I take the images of the MRI and show her that it's impossible to see at that time that she had, that the implant was ruptured. And I convinced her that it's, it was a difficult diagnosis. And after that, I start searching for information regarding breast implants. And interesting in 2016, we only have three uh, articles regarding breast implants in PubMed. Regarding breast implant in PubMed and with very low information. And I start on my clinical practice. I, I, I learn, I, I read a lot of breast MRI, like 70 each week. And I start seeing a lot of findings, common findings in that, that woman that like this, I can see, I could see mass inside the capsule, the fibrous capsule, and that have enhancement. And that is just like the same of the three articles that's, that are talking about the, the BALCL. And I start giving the diagnosis of BALCL. But interesting because these patients went through surgery and at the final result, they have nothing, only capsular contracture. And they, they didn't give the diagnosis of, of what they have. Here's the first SIG, uh, I gave the name of SIGBI, it's silicone induced granuloma breast implant capsule of the, of the disease that I, that I described. And here's the first and diagnosis that I have improved. So this patient had a, a mass inside the fibrous capsule. At the ultrasound, you can see it's a hard mass. And at the biopsy, and I can see here's the specimen where we can see the, the cat, the, the, the mass, it's a real mess. But at, it, I was so disappointing because the diagnosis of, the, of, of this patient was capsular contracture and her implants are intact at macros, macroscopy. 
Then I asked for the pathologist to review the, 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 the specimen and search for free silicon. And she starts searching for silicon and she give, give me back and told me that there are a lot of silicon despite the integrity of the, of the breast implants. So then I saw here, despite the integrity of the implant, there is silicon bleeding and this bleeding is causing problem in this woman. And I had the first case of BALCL at the same time. And they are so, so, so just like the, 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 we have the same findings. And I published this on 2017, on March 2017. So I have these cases on 2016. And I start uh, showing my results at the medical meetings here in Brazil. And I start uh, research regarding best breast implants in my service. I made a study protocol. I start searching for breast implants. Uh, that, that patient that went through magnetic resonance scan, uh, if they have the, the findings uh, of SIGBIC, uh, we made then an ultrasound biopsy and surgery. Ultrasound in these cases are very interesting because I have the contact to the patient and I can find if the, the findings of the MRI I can found on the ultrasound and I keep in contact with the patient. And so here they show me and they told me the compliance regarding the breast implants that most often nobody cares about the, about the compliance. They're, these patients most often uh, are taken as psychological problems and not uh, uh, a true disease. Then we described the silicone induced urinoma of breast implant capsule. This is the SIGBIC. We created a um, breast MRI criteria for the diagnosis and we observed the clinical complaints of these patients. Here we can see this is a normal MRI. I, the findings that I would describe are original. And here we can see the masses with late contrast enhancement in these two in the implants. Here is the mass. And they have enhancement. So it's a true mass. It's not a, a fake mass because they have vascularity. And most of these findings are considered as seroma of collect or collection because especially in the United States, they don't make they don't use contrast media in these patients. And here is the impress of the mass in the implants. So it's a, it's a real finding at the breast MRI and it's not that difficult to make this diagnosis. When we see these patients in the surgery, here is this, the silicone, the SIGBIC. In the capsule, here's the capsule, here's the mass. And at histology, Despite the integrity of the implant, we can see two types of silicon. We can see extracellular silicon. Here's a giant cell with the silicon. And here's the lymphocytes, especially T. Here's the fibroblasts making the fibrosis. That's the capsular contracture. And we can see an intracellular silicon. It's an ischio, a fumi ischiocytai. ischiocytai is the tyosite. And this Fumi tyosite, it's uh, going to make if the disease is going to be severe or, in, or, or not severe. If we have a lot of this Fumi is geocities, uh, we are going probably she could have an immune response, uh, a severe immune response with collection and a, a lot of lymphocyte T and the, the, the this clinical findings is going to be a hardness of the of the breast with a big seroma and the, the compliance are more, more severe than the extracellular silicone. So 
here is uh, what I say, there's the bleeding in contact with the, with the capsule. Here is the inflammatory response and the CIBIC. And in our experience, we can say uh, this is the most cases if it's not severe. We have polyclonal cells at the histology. We are going to have um, less aggr aggressive disease. And this patient is not going to have any diagnosis. The diagnosis of this patient is going to be only capsular contracture. But if they had um, monoclonal CD30 positive, this patient is going to be more severe and she's going to have the diagnosis of ACL. And what happens? With the bleeding, we have the capsule that it's uh, by here of our body, but this bleed, uh, bleeded silicone can go to the lymph node and then can go to the body of the woman. So the, 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 we have a systemic dissemination of this, of this silicone and we can have diseases like colitis, arthritis, and rash, uh, skin rash, and brain fog, dry eyes. So my patients always, most often, refer these types of complaints. Here I can show some images of my patients. So these patients have, start to have arthritis after the implant with a breast enlargement. Here it's an inflammatory change on her on the breast of this patient. This other has an enlargement of the breast. Here's this patient has an in, in skin involvement of the of, of her breast. This has inflammatory with uh, secretion. This is uh, contact with the inside of the implant. And this has an eczema uh, on her skin. And all of these complications starts after the, the, the implant surgery. Here are some original findings. So I, uh, I can see at, at breast ultrasound these findings. It's interesting because the implants they change the echogenicity of the inside of the implants. So with these changes in the implant, we can see there is a chem chemical reaction inside them. So it, okay. this is original too, no, nobody reports this. And it's so easy to, to make the diagnosis, but we need to, to know this disease. And here's say? the granuloma. The granuloma, it's so difficult to see if you don't have expertise, but it's so easy to learn how to make it. And Dr. here's no, it's no, sorry. Dr. Flair, could you, could you say, could you repeat what you just said on that first slide? Because that, that this, I didn't know this, and this is a big, this is a big deal. Yeah, because when we put the, the, this, the implant in the, in the body, we're going to have the fibrous capsule. So we have only the implant and the fibrous capsule. During the time, we're going to have a collection inside that's uh, for the inflammatory response. But this, after maybe two, two months, we can see we have uh, the surface of the implant. It's going to be damaged. So this, this, collection is going to, to, to go inside the implant. When it goes inside the implant, it's going to make the reaction and probably it's going to take the polydimethyl siliconin, the PDMS, outside the implant. This is going to keep in contact to the, to, to the capsule and it's going to make the reaction. But these implants, we can, uh, when they are new, they are clear, they don't have anything. When they, we have the CIGBIC diagnosis, we can see these changes in the, in the implant. It's easy to see, to see that. And here are the masses inside the, the capsule, just like that one that I show in the MRI. And they are typical of masses due to silicon. They have this snowstorm artifact. <clears throat> it's typical of 
<coughs> see the clump. I'm sorry. Here are the breast MRI images. Here I'm not showing any BALCL, or only CIGBIC that I think it's breast implant illness. So we can see a huge collection inside the implant and uh, masses with low contrast enhancement. Here is the permeability loss of the implant. You can see the seroma going inside the implant. Here's the implant shell and here's the, the, the water, the, 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 the fluid getting inside. This is one sign we have in MRI that we don't know why we are not, we're not used to know why they appear. It's the water droplet, but I can infer that this is the permeability loss of the shell. And this is going to be the chemical reaction. And here is the granuloma. And here is an uh, intense inflammatory response of the glandular tissue just in the pericapsular space. So all of the findings, here's the contrast of this patient. All of these findings are just like the same of the BALCL, but these patients are considered as normal exam uh, at the pathology. They only have capsular contracture. The PET-CT of these patients, we can see at the capsular, we can see an uptake of the FDG and inferring uh, uh, inflammatory process. This patient, she had a mass in the lung. This patient, it's very interesting because you can see that she had lymph, uh, lymph nodes, inflammatory lymph nodes in all of her body. So the, here you can see the dissemination of the, of, the, of the disease. And after the explant, all of these nodes Go, goes out. And here are the granulomas, and we can see the uptake. It's cu cu curious that when we, it's only inside intercapsular, the, the disease, we, we have less uptake than when it goes outside the capsule, because the capsule is like a barrier of the, of the body. And this is very interesting. It's uh, this sequence, sequence uh, sensitive to silicon, and you can see the, the silicon in the axillary nodes, in, in thoracic nodes, and here you can see the, the bleeding of the silicon. And this is two patients, two different patients, we can see the, this, these findings. And is this MRI? MRI. And here's the ultrasound of the of the axillary node, and here's the snowstorm artifact. It's just like the same that I show in the last ultrasound of the, of the implant. And when you say the MRI is silicone sensitive, is this a, is this a... Um, uh... This is a sequence, a specific se sequence that we, we are used to, to, to making all scans or when we are talking about breast implants. And is this just but, for your center but, or is this like a... No, no, it, uh, it, it, uh, worldwide, uh, all the world make this sequence. But until 2015, I didn't have many information regarding this. After I start studying, I, I, I make the... I could understand these findings, and then I'm, I'm publishing and trying to to make it to to, to spread the, the, this the, this findings. Sure. And do you How, think do you think if you don't say say someone has explanted and they wanted to see silicone, could they do the silicone sequencing? Yeah, using my criteria, it's so easy to to make. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> and next, okay. and here's the node. Here, here's the node. So you can see the nodes with with this silicon in all of her body and uh, huge lymph nodes. So the disease is disseminated here. 
And here are some patients. We can see the swelling of the implant here. Here's the capsule with the cigbic. And here is the, some people say that this is the biofilm, but in my opinion and in my experience, the biofilm is just the swelling of the silicone from inside to the, to the intracapsular uh, environment. Here's the silicone, despite it, all of these implants are, they are, uh, don't have future. But we can see some here, some damage at the shell of the implant at the same place that we have the, the SIGBIC. And here's the implant adhered adhere to the capsule. And here we can see these findings. It's just like the biofilm. And we can see this same findings and of the BILCL uh, manuscript. So the microscopy here, you can see despite the integrity of the implant, you can see uh, the extracellular silicone. Here's the patients that have more indolent disease and they are going to course like a fibrous capsule contracture. And here's the patient with more aggressive disease, just like the same of the BLCL. They have a lot of lymphocytes here, but here in Brazil, most of these patients, they went to anti-inflammatory therapy, to, to antibiotics. And so when she goes to the diagnosis, probably the inflammatory process is less. So we can see CD30 positive here, but they are not that positive to be a BLCL. So these patients have the same findings of the BLCL but despite they don't have CD30 positive and the ATP of the lymphocytes, they have the diagnosis that they don't have nothing. So these are the invisible women because they have the compliance, they have the disease, they go through the surgery, but at the end, they told that it's a psychological findings and as the CD30 is negative and they, she had uh, typical lymphocytes, she don't, doesn't have nothing. So they are invisible for, for us. I start sharing my results. Here are some uh, meetings that in 2017, in 17, all of the, the, uh, the societies here, they start in, uh, to be interesting in my, in my results. But the next year, I was not invited to nothing. And they told me that I, I was making fake news. And they, it's interesting because most of, the, of these meetings, they are sponsored by the, the, the silicon companies. So in 2018, I had to make a decision I have two ways to go. One was the easier way to abandon the research. I have four legal processes related to the implants. And as I was boycotted by the academy as fake news. Or I have to choose a lonely way. And I start adding the, in my reports, the CIGBIC per presence. I start, uh, my, my battle is, making the research and putting in the lit literature what, what I was finding and start an evidence-based medicine. Because when I discuss with someone that's going to talk about BALCL, they are going to start to say, oh, I, we don't know why it, it appears or probably maybe have bleeding, but the bleeding is so, it's not that huge and it's not going to cause anything in the patients. And I went to the same conference with a lot of images and a lot of data, and it was not comfortable uh, during the, the discussion. So, and after that, nobody calls me to, 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 to share my experience. But at that time, at the media, at uh, social media, I could meet some patients and some people that are 
have the complaint complaints regarding the breast implants. And I entered in this group and it's very nice. I meet, meet Daniele and Maria Dimitro. And it's very nice because I could see that many patients in the world are, have the same complaints of my patients. And I start trying to, to link the breast implant illness with the SIGBIT. And we are going to, these are the voices of silence because th these patients, they are in the social media, then they're talking about their complaints and nobody cares about the, the, their complaints. Especially the, the mainstream, they consider most of the, of the reports are, they go to the societies or to the companies to, to ask them for uh, if there is problems or not. And they're not going to interview a patient. They're going to interview the experts. But that if the experts don't have the, the data, they're, they're not going to give the, the, the right opinion probably. And so these groups and my research and all of these things are, were, were considered as fake news at that time. And I start searching for some articles in the li literature uh, regarding the breast implant illness. And most of them are talking that it was myths or uh, that this is medicine by belief by Dr. Google. But when we see the compliance of these authors, most of them works or uh, have, uh, have any compliance with the industry. So this, these people works for the industry and are talking against the implant, uh, against the breast implant units and favor to, 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 bre to breast implants. And why we talk about BALCL? We have a huge market of implants in the world. So that they are expecting to, to increase in 6%. It's billion of dollars. We have a lot of merchandising, a lot of marketing, a lot of money spent on the, on the silicon industry. And BALCL is a hard disease with good prognosis. We have only 600 patients in the, uh, by the FDA with the disease only nine deaths. So for the industry, it's convenient to have the BALCL. They can sell the implants to, and say that the implants are secure because most of the patients, it's not going to have any problem. But when we talk about SIGBIC, we can see that all implants bleed and that silicone is toxic and it's going to have immune response that I can see in 40% of the patients that go to the breast MRI scans. I have 3,000 implants to this in my facility, and I don't have any false positive result. All of the patients that had made the diagnosis of SIGBIC, they had the bleeding at the microscopy uh, of the fibrous capsule. So, Based on my research, I can say that implants is, are toxic. Here's only to show the difference between the new implant and the implant with the chemical reaction inside. Here's a breast MRI of the, this is published in this journal. And this is the findings that you can see of the implant. Here's the, it's a double gel implant. Here's the 2016 and 2018. You can see that these patients had the seroma on, on 2016, and she was only treated with anti-inflammatory. So the seroma is going to be, she's going to have uh, in periods of that she's going to have the inflammatory process, then it's going to remiss, to, to have the remission. And after time, it's going to have it again. And, but these patients have the SIGBIC at, 
at the histology. And here's the implant. They changed the color during the time. So here's a chemical reaction that came from that. And you can see the new implant and the, here's the ultrasound. Here's the breast MRI the, of the, these implants. And here's the ultrasound. And we can see the changes of the content of the implants. And all implants here is different brands. I can see that some, some types of some brands of implants have this, the, some particular findings at breast MRI. Here's the PIP, here's the mentor one, and all of them have some particular findings on the breast MRI. And what happens with the implant? Here's the microscopy of the implant. Here's the texture side, and here's the smooth. In the smooth side of this implant, we can see that there's a damage on the silicon, and here's the, the shedding or maybe bleeding of the, the silicon to the, to the shell. And here is the permeability loss of the, here's the fat going inside the implant. Here's the patient that, uh, one of the patients that, of mine that have BALCL, and we can see here, it's the vascular, new vascularization that comes from the fibrous capsule to inside the implant. Here are the water droplets, signs that you can see at breast MRI. And this patient had the SIGDIC on her left breast and the PALCL on her right breast. And most of the patients with BALCL, I can see signs of, of SIGDIC. So probably the, the evolution of the disease was different from one breath to other, but they have the same trigger point. The, the trigger point here probably, and you can prove that with the microscopy of the implant. Here you can see it's so cloudy, the implant here. So the, there is a chemical reaction inside of this patient. And we have vascularization inside the implant. In the implant. I wrote an article, then I, then I, I describe when breast implants get alive. It's on breast journal. So we can see masses inside the implants. So we are gaining voices regarding the breast implant illness, especially in mainstream, internet, and academy for today. And with this simple sentence, using the SIGB diagnosis, we can empower the woman and change the, the, the disease of the, the, the history of, the, of her disease, because we can infer that she had breast implant illness by breast MRI. So if this is how I work in my practice, I use intracapsular mass with late contrast enhancement, enhancement consistent to silicon induced granuloma. With this sentence, probably, this patient is going to have the diagnosis of the implant complication and then can go to explant or can treat her disease with a, a, based on an imaging finding that it's real. And what I uh, what we think that BALCL and SIGBER, they're just like the same disease and they are all from the breast implant illness. So they should be the, the uh, one is more aggressive than, than the other. And for today, we are studying some cancers, breast cancers that could be related to implants. I, uh, I submitted one manuscript uh, recently where I, I, I show my findings and I made a theory of, of, of this, uh, of this, but it's, going to be, it's not going to, to be, we are researching this, it's not for today. So our results conclude that all implants have gel bleeding and cheating, PDMS in contact to fibrocapsule develop an immune reaction. We call this SIGBIC and PDMS can migrate to the whole body. And here probably we're going to have the Asia syndrome. 
silicone implants are toxic and breast implant units are real. I can show, I can show you my, my patients. How can I, how do I contribute to the cause? I have more than 13 articles published in the literature. All of these findings and all of the, uh, all that I say here, it's published in the medical literature. And I created a, a blog where I can talk to the patients. And because when I start using this sentence in my, in my report, most of the patients call me, their doctors say, oh, the, he's crazy. There's nothing, uh, it's fake news. And I need to spend my time. It's, a, it's not, uh, I like to do this, but I had a lot of calls and it was easier to make the blog and that tell them to go to the blog, to read the information and then call me back. So I, it, it was, much easier for, for us. And here's interesting because when you see the implant, uh, the, the surface, they are intact. They don't have any problem. But when you go to the microscopy, especially when we have the, 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 the collection inside, we can see the damage. And this is in the smooth part of the implant, not at the test the textured. So it doesn't matter if you have a smooth or textured, you're going to have the problem in all of the implants. And here's the block. And thank you. That's it.